Yes, and welcome to episode 290 of Aussie Tech Heads every Thursday night, live recording on uh, live.thesecrethub.com and also podcasting through iTunes as well. So welcome, Lounge. Lounge, join us every every Thursday night at around a bit, well, from 7.30, have a bit of a tinker, and then we get into it at about 8 o'clock. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so from, it normally should start at 7.40, but as always, always issues, uh, audio issues, video issues. And uh, all things galore. But we've sorted them. We're back. We're good. So, how's everyone been? Eric, Will, how you going? Uh, it's been an interesting week, thanks to Microsoft and their marvellous updates. Um, they pretty much successfully bought down my entire house. Nice. No, no Windows-based computer actually survived the week. <laughs> oh. So, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> buy a Mac, Will. My Linux system was fine, um, as you'd expect. But yeah, it. Uh well, I'd, I had a lot of updates uh, just before the show, actually. I, I, I don't know, the 17 updates. I don't know if anyone else got, got those this week from that Patch no. Tuesday. 17? What, today? Yeah, today. They've probably been hanging mm. there since Tuesday. Oh, that's possible. Yeah, so yeah, they were. Yeah, so. Uh, I haven't done them yet. I had enough trouble with last week's. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you do with your system up there, Will. I don't get any trouble. Mine's uh, sweet as a nut. Sweet as a nut. Um, mm. All right. So uh, every Thursday night, as I said, yes, Skype, Aussie Tech Heads, if you want to call in live and uh, talk to us. Now, listen, I've been running a competition, but no one, not many, no one uh, is willing to put up an MP3 or a video for a Britney Spears uh, CD. <laughs> oh, I think we're going to gonna change the competition. How about just send me an email and tell me whereabouts you are in the world and and uh, why you like the show and I'll put you it's all into a barrel and then someone will win it. Then someone will win it from there. I know I think I think you're scaring them off, mate, with the prize. <laughs> I think that I know. I think I think that's uh, probably the thing. I know people can probably go, Oh gee, I'm not gonna have any any trouble with a just for a Britney Spears C D. My goodness me. Well hang on, hang on, what else have I got here? Hang on, hang on. Here we go. I'm gonna pull it all out. What have we got? Okay, so Oh, no. Where they go? Here they are. That's the wrong bio. Okay, here we go. So we've got the Britney Spears. Now, how about, as well as Britney Spears, how about we go uh, Kings of Leon? Are they any good? Is it? Well, yeah, I, I like Kings right. of Leon. Like Kings. Oh, just as a um, just as an, an aside here, on the uh, Google Live Hangout and going onto YouTube. The only, the only um, person that's showing is me, my ugly mug. So um, <laughs> you might want to fix that. Can't do much about that. <laughs> well, that's weird. I could probably do that one there. See how that one goes. That's, that's not going to work. <laughs> oh, what are you doing there, dude? So <laughs> yeah, like well, see, well, it's supposed to change the it's supposed to change picture on the Google Hangout, but because we're using Skype for the audio. There you go. Now you're on. You're on now. You're right. Yeah. You've set it, sorted it. You want me just to leave it there? Oh, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You can be a. Oh bonus. yes, of course it won't auto switch, will it? Of no, course. that's right. But anyway, don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> Paper.aussietechheads.com.au is the paper that comes out twice a day with a, a with an array of different stories. Uh, just plot it in there into a magazine style thing you can subscribe to it which is good uh audio uh, radio will how's that coming along is that working we you don't actually Not. know this yet but after all that <laughs> fabulous work you did and you've you know got it all up and running and it's, and it's great you didn't pay you're probably bill. changing service oh why <laughs> because this server is unreliable buggy and they just doubled their price oh what to two dollars <laughs> no they went from four bucks a month for what we were using it for um, yeah. Now they want to make it twelve dollars. Actually, more than double. They want to make it twelve dollars a month, and then they want to charge extra for the auto DJ function. Yeah, right. So that's not going to happen. Um, just we'll switch. And th the problem is too, they have been quite buggy. Um, I've had a few emails with people who are having issues with the audio, like not being able to hear it properly, or it's flaky, or it cuts in and out. Um, and they're basically their support saying yes it's our problem um but they just right. they basically got greedy they got too big too quick and haven't got the infrastructure to support well, it so we're going to go to a dedicated 
uh, yeah, lines, okay. basically, okay. but dedicated bandwidth instead now, of shared bandwidth. Okay, so when you do that, if you can, can you find a host that will, or a service that will let us put up the 128K version? Yeah. Cool. Uh, it'll do that. It'll also already have all the flash coding and stuff to do it. So. All right. So, so okay, so the radio is on hold, but it's coming back. It'll be back soon. Uh, all right. So let's get started into some show stories, I suppose. Oh, I'm good, thanks. Oh, yeah, you all right? Good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you, I thought you were talking away before. Uh, yeah, you? I just butted in, mate. Yeah, well, see, there you go. You butt in, you lose your intro. That's what, <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens around here. That's how we roll oh, in the gee, show. You're, geez, I tell you, you're, you're a hard man. Oh, I've toughened up. I've toughened up. <laughs> you've toughened up. Had enough. <laughs> that's right. Now, uh, and also, uh, just before the show, of course, we have Tech Webcast from TechWebcast.info. So, hi, boys, over there for doing, and thanks for doing that. And uh, big show this week went for about fifty minutes, so I'm um, putting a lot of work. So good stuff. Uh, now, where shall we start with the stories? I've got uh, a few tonight. Now I've sort of put them in a bit of an order for you tonight. And we, we might stick to the order, might not. But uh, we've got some mobile phone news stories first, so we might as well uh, get stuck into those, I suppose. Unless anyone else has got a better spot to start at. So that uh, means okay, you start, mate. I'll I'll <laughs> just um, All right. you know whatever. Now, last week we said that the Samsung Galaxy S3 was was no release date in Australia. Well, now this week that has changed. Apparently, it's uh, it's ex- uh, Samsung is expected to announce the Australian availability and pricing for the Galaxy S3 on the 31st of May. So there you go. Not too long to wait now, and you'll get the uh, you'll get it um, announced. So now this is powered by Samsung's 1.4 gig Exynos quad core processor. There you go. Who makes all these processors? Does anyone know? Are these all special? They're not all. Do you, do you really care, mate? Let's be honest. Oh, no, no, not particularly. But, I mean, like, you know, you've got in- Intel. You've got the AMD. You've got ARM. Well, there's ARM. Yeah, and now there's another one, Exynos. Exy- Exynos. Exynos. Hmm. Quad core processor. One gig of RAM. It's, uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So, there you go. So, the Galaxy S3. Ah, uh, not touching it. Now, Sony. <laughs> <laughs> Sony, uh, <laughs> I'll give you uh, an update on my TV. The good old oh pa- yes, please. The good old Panasonic TV. It's gone to God. It's Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's probably had a look at it too, but can't, no one can help it. No one can and help he kick, it. He, he kicked it and threw it out as well. Yeah, so it's gone. Uh, apparently, he's going to have two boards had blown on it or something, about two hundred bucks each. So anyway, so it looks like we're up for a new one. Now Sony debuts their floating t- touch Xperia Solar in Oz. So there's another one. Another the little mobile phone, but it's exclusive to Harvey Norman. So that's, yeah, that's all right. With that. Yeah, well, Harvey, that, that's a bit of a coup for them, I suppose, if they think it's going to sell like hotcakes. But the anyway, is, is people still shopping at Harvey Norman? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I went in there and looked and you scanned some stuff and found them cheaper elsewhere and went there to buy them. <laughs> you're, you're, you're so if by shopping you mean window shopping, yes. <laughs> went in there. Well, you know, so, so keep selling things at five times the price of normal. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, but um, yeah. So there's this smartphone, this Sony's uh, Android smartphone with X, Xperia Solar, uh, is available from Harvey Norman now nationally. The smartphone is is sold exclusively for around four hundred eighty six dollars. Now the NFC enabled handset launches Sony's Floating Touch. Now we'll go and check this floating touch out. I don't know if it's uh, something I'd be interested in, uh, but it's it's like it's floating touch technology uh, for navigation without touching the screen. So apparently you just hold your finger over the hyperlinks and they'll 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 light up. And then if you want to follow the link, you press it. So you actually then touch the screen. Yeah. Good luck with the RSI on that one. Yeah. That's what I can say. <laughs> But you wouldn't. But let's you just float and over. What's the difference of floating over the screen and just touching? Yeah, yeah. How lazy are you? That's yeah, you got, there's a centimeter between you and the screen. What are you going to just not touch it? I yeah. think the thing, the theory is, it's supposed to minimise on fingerprints. But I don't know. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Right now, it yeah. currently runs on Gingerbread 2.3. Um, the technology is currently only available for web for web browsing, but it'll extend to other applications when the handset is upgraded to Android 4. Upgraded to Android 4 ice cream sandwich. The Xperia Solar comes with a 3.7 inch display. It includes a 5 megapixel camera on the back. No front facing camera. That's uh, no, no, no fun facing camera. No, that's just. <laughs> I reckon what they should be doing is these phones. Yeah, you know, they got the front front facing and the back 
facing. They should have mm-hmm. the camera up in like the top, you know, of top side. They should have the so camera. you can do your upper skirt videos. <laughs> well, it's just so you can walk around because if you're doing a, you're trying to take a picture of a play or whatever you're trying to do, you know, everyone knows you're taking a picture by holding it up. Oh, so you want some sort of spy camera so people doesn't don't yeah. know you're having you're taking yeah. a photo. So instead of holding it up like that and taking a photo, you know, you could just walk around. And you know what they should do? <laughs> they should put it on the side. So you could be pointing in front of you, but you're actually taking a f- video of at 3 o'clock and the person to your right is going to think, oh, he's taking a video of the person in front of him. That's right. You're actually taking a video to the right. Now you're and talking. it'll have a viewfinder there so you can still see what you're doing. Yeah, that's right. Now you're talking. And a periscope. Or you could... <laughs> Well, you could just buy one of the five dollar spy cams off eBay and do exactly the same thing. You there see, you go. You see those. <laughs> you see those. The cameras you can uh, pop into the. Is it the iPhone? The telescopic little lens, telescopic camera. You pop them into the iPhone. Yeah, there's that. There's also the. Uh, actually, I, I quite like. It works on Android as well. It's a. I think they actually call it the periscope, but it's it actually takes a full three hundred and sixty um, panoramic picture. You lay the phone flat on the table and you put this little, it's like a pyramid-shaped thing over the top of the, the camera. Yeah. And, and the, yeah, it takes a full 360-degree panoramic. Yeah, nice, nice. 3D yeah, panoramic. The, the, um, what do you call it? The, um, you know, those virtual tours that the real estate agents have when you look at buying a house? They've always, that's, that's, I think they use a similar camera to that. Yeah, right. Yeah, probably, so- a little bit, probably a little bit better, but, yeah. So they shoot fisheye lens mostly, and take four or five photos and stitch them together. Oh yeah, have you ever done photo photos like that, Will or Eric? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. I haven't. Yeah. The, when we were selling our house, the last house we sold, um, the guy came in and took all the photos, and we um, I had a look at his gear, and it's uh, pretty good. Yeah, right. And and Will, you've had you've done it with your Android phone or something? I've done it with the phone. Done it with. You know, special lenses on the DSLR. There's a few different ways of doing the same thing. The hardest part about it, uh, regardless of what you use to actually take the photos, the hardest part about it is trying to make it look right. right. Um, it's it, if you stitch like a normal panoramic, if you stitch it together, um, it's it just looks really long. But when yeah. you're doing a 3D one, where you're talking like a fisheye lens and you see a full 180 degrees up and down as well as around. Yeah. But when you stitch it together, it sort of looks weird because it looks like you're on the inside of a globe. Yeah, okay. Um, so, like, I've, yeah, I've, making the picture look right is actually the hard part. Because I've tried it with my phone and, like, the phone just goes into some mode where it just starts taking six photos, you know, mm. or whatever. And, you, and you've just, you just got to move the camera around cert- so many certain degrees all the time. And, yeah. uh, but look, it stitches them back together okay by itself. Uh, yeah, I've got no problem with it. It seems all right. It's a bit of fun. The best, the, the way you're supposed to take a panorama is you're supposed to have it perfectly straight to wherever the, the picture is. And yeah. you're supposed to take that photo. And then you're actually physically supposed to move however far required to put the next shot in frame. You're not supposed to rotate. Mm. And that's the difference. You see panoramas that look okay and then you see ones that look really good and that's the difference they've actually physically moved you know 100 meters to the left to take the next photo yeah yeah right. um, so yeah yeah so uh next next little mobile story i had here was that google is to release five jelly bean devices jelly bean nexus devices Yummy. Uh, google is planning on releasing up to five nexus devices to mark the launch of android 5 according to the wall street journal it's reportedly going to sell all the new unlocked handsets directly from November when Android 5 Jelly Bean is released. Google spoke of plans to manufacture a high-quality tablet with Asus, uh, rumoured to be the manufacturer. So there you go. So mm. things are going on over there. Still won't be buying one. No, no. I don't think they called it gold jelly bean. <laughs> or oh. diamond encrusted jelly bean. I'm still not buying it. Maybe if they included like a twenty liter bucket of jelly beans, then I might. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> nah, forty liter, <laughs> forty liter bucket. Uh, yeah, so uh, so you're happy with yours, Will? You're with Telstra now. I'm uh, still languishing with mine. Look, I, I honestly think it mine is the phone. Mine now just is just slow, even on the on the Wi-Fi. So look, I'm sick of talking about my phone. Eh? 
So, uh, <laughs> so now, um, next one. Anyone else got any stories? Uh, wanna... Let me see here. Well, let's talk. Let's we're on phones. Let's talk about uh, the supposed rumours of the iPhone that's going to have a larger screen. I don't know how true this is, but it, according to this report in the uh, Herald, mm. it says iPhone will have ah, – stop doing that. iPhone, which has had the same design since 2010, which looks dated compared to new rivals apparently. Mm, go on. I don't think it looks dated at all, but, you know, what do I know? Well, Apple yeah. plans to use a larger screen on its – you know. I don't know where they get this from because they're making it sound like it's fact. And at the end of the day, no one really knows until it happens, right? We all That's know right. this. Yeah. But this, they're, they're writing it like they know. Apple plans to use a larger screen on the next generation iPhone and has begun to place orders for the new displays from suppliers in South Korea and Japan. People familiar with the situation said. Yeah, I know. It's always... <laughs> I can't stand that. That's yeah. rubbish. It's just... Okay. Um, yeah, it's like you, you make up a story. And but you, you just... always got to put that caveat at the end. Yes, because it's made up and... That's yeah, right. So you've got to say something. Protecting your sources, you know. Yeah. Rubbish. Well, Journalism at its best. Yeah. Like, to look, tonight I have got a few of those stories, little a couple of rumour stories, and and it's probably... Look, I normally brush over them. Like, I'm just not interested. Oh, I, I read it, but I take... I don't actually say, oh, yeah, I believe it, but I, it's always interesting to read to see what other people are saying. Yeah. Uh, but I think those Mac rumour stories... You know, people, someone, some big companies place a large order for these screens and they've all of a sudden gone, well, hey, a new iPhone's coming out, must be for the iPhone. And for all uh, we know, it's for the uh, Google Google Android tablet, for all we know. Well, that's right. It could be for a new Kindle Fire yeah, or something. Exactly. Which that, exactly. One's, that one's supposed to be coming out too. There's a new Kindle Good Fire. Australia. Well, I've already got one, mate. No, but there's a new one. That's what I'm saying. Well, there's a new one. Apparently. Yeah, it's yep. going to be a bigger screen. Uh, to rival, <laughs> iPod. They're going to call it the Kindle iPad. <laughs> well, it's going to be about an inch smaller, I think, than the the iPad. So a nine inch or an eight inch screen. Yeah, eight point seven or something. Um, it's going to release. Oh, that's a weird. That's a weird. Uh, eight point nine decision to make because their current one is seven inches. They just have to be at least nine inches to make it look any different to mm. the current one. It's eight point nine. Right. Okay. Uh, according, so close according to a report. According to a report. <laughs> yes. According to a report, the company has positioned its second-generation tablet, which is Amazon, to directly take on Apple's 9.7-inch iPad. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now That's I, interesting. Go yes, on. Yes, I was just going to say, now after my mobile stories, I've got some Apple stories. So we can, we can start off with some Apple stories. I'll just get my little graphic up for the people that are watching us on the, on the video. So here we go. A little, little graphic coming up. Here it is. Now, Steve Jobs, we were, we were talking about uh, his movie. Now, all of a sudden, there's two movies. Did you know this? Yeah. Yes, I knew this. Now, but the main one is the Aaron Sorkin one. The yes, one that yes. The one that, that uh, Ashton Kutch is making, apparently, is more of an indie movie That's rather right. than a full-blown Hollywood blockbuster. So the social network screenwriter, Aaron yes. Sorkin, is on board, for, and everyone's Seen the social Everyone network. pretty much knew that he was going to get on board. Yeah, he's on board for the Sony Pictures biopic Steve Jobs. The second film of uh, to, has been announced. Last month it was revealed that uh, Ashton Kutcher, as uh, Eric was saying, was uh, playing Jobsy. Now there's a little picture here. I don't know if we've got a, if I can get you that picture on on screen. It's a it's there. There we go. Picture of Ashton and. <laughs> Well, they reckon well, it looks like him. Well, it's pretty stupid of them to compare Ashton, uh, you know, dressing up as Steve Jobs in his 20s to Steve Jobs in his 50s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we compare them, compare them properly. Yeah, so so as Eric said, the, the, the Sony's biopic is based on the best-selling Walter Isaacson biography that was released late last year, just after uh, Steve passed away. So, yeah. Yes, exactly. Now, now, there's a guy. How How's this guy going? Apple fan Rob Shoesmith, a loyal Apple user, he's camped outside of Apple's Covent, Covent Garden England store for 10 nights, wait, for? waiting for the release of the iPhone 4S in October last year, 2011. Right, he nothing will, else to do. He will sell his house and donate the funds to charity after being inspired by the help of the homeless. 
But oh. it, but <laughs> th- there's a twist to the story. Because <laughs> no, obviously no one's really going to just give their house away. Like, would, well, I wouldn't. No, I know I wouldn't. <laughs> well, it's not my house, so I'll give it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give away Eric's house to whoever wants it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, people. I will give away my house in a raffle if everyone buys a ticket for $10, but I've got to sell 1.5 million tickets. Well, <laughs> this is that's, pre- the, res- this that's is, the result. This is pretty much what's going on here. As part of the camping experiment, Rob was forbidden from spending any money and had to rely on the generosity of passers-by. So he was so touched by this that uh, he said that he's going to sell his house and donate the, the uh, proceeds to charity. But Rob is pro- promising this only uh, if a million copies of his book called Been There, Done That are sold. Yeah, well, <laughs> Rob can go blow it out of his... Yeah, so it's not a real... Uh, it's not a real act of philanthropy, is it? No, not really. The book centres around how smartphone apps transform Rob's life. Good on, Rob. Oh, good on you, Rob. <laughs> Jeez. Next story, please. Oh, th- the book is... Av- oh, I'm not even going to bother. No. Google Listen, it, I've got an interesting interesting story here. There's HP. Um, this, the world's biggest computer maker is preparing to produce tablets n- made of flexible but virtually unbreakable plastic. Right. With almost unlimited low-powered storage, this is HP, unlike anything used in current computers. The revolutionary technology could also be used to create wearable powered screens as thin as the average person's head of hair and you can be slipped onto a wrist or worn like a bracelet. Bar. Well, I've got a video of it. Right. Now, let me share the screen for you. Oh, no, the technology. <laughs> oh, geez, I tell you, here we go. Now, I'm going to play it now. Now, there's the screen. Oh, yeah, that's nice and thin, isn't it? It's like a piece of paper. You can roll it up, you can fold it. It's like for those listening uh, on the uh, podcast, it's uh, like a, a, a bit of alfoil. It's like a thin film of alfoil. The HP are developing this. They've never, they haven't said when it's going to come out, but they're developing it now and it's in testing. Yeah, nice. So uh, actually, yeah, it's uh, just a So you'll have a tablet that you can just fold up and put in your back pocket. <laughs> yeah, it won't impress me until it's like smart paper where you can just sort of write on it and it responds. No, no one writes on tablets anymore, mate. That's 1985. <laughs> that's, uh, that's 1792. Right. No, I mean not write as in with the stylus. I mean like with a pen so you could like you can actually write something or draw something mm. as well. Like so it's input, output. Yeah. All right. right. Have you got Good your... luck with that. <laughs> Hey, I heard, I heard that uh, the, the new Macs are coming out with the, the Retina display. I've heard that rumour as well. Mm. Mm. Um, just a I don't rumor? know how true that is, but I have heard that rumour as well. Just a report? I don't know. I mean, how... Report? Yeah, what, according to sources. Saying... <laughs> Sorry, Will? I was going to say, weren't they saying that it was incredibly... I guess it's like OLED, though. It was incredibly expensive and difficult to make in large scale, you know, a bigger size, but over... You know, the last five years since since OLEDs have come out, they've gradually got them cheaper and larger. So I suppose it's possible. Hmm. Well, it's ha- possible. The, the, well, the uh, the uh, the iPads have got them, and so have the iPhones. So hmm. I suppose maybe their manufacturing process is now uh, efficient enough. Who knows that? You know, if the rumor is true, that maybe they will have it. I don't know. I don't know. Now, also, uh, did you hear the story? Apple stitching Google Maps. Heard that? Yes, that's interesting, isn't it? Oh, yeah. it geez, I tell you what, it better not be a crappy replacement that then. <laughs> oh, surely be, not. Because otherwise, you'll be going from the fry pan into the fire. Well, <laughs> no, surely not. Surely not. Like, I mean, you know, I don't think things will slip slip uh, that bad. Like, I, I read also with interest that uh, was when he was just out in Australia recently. Oh, I've got a story for you oh. about was. Sorry to butt in. Yeah, you're right. You're not going to believe this. On the weekend. I went to watch a play um, with my wife for Mother's Day on Saturday night. Um, you know, you called Yes, Prime Minister. Oh, yes. That's was, on you know, based on the British show. That's on here tomorrow night. That's Yeah, well, it finished here in Sydney. We saw the last show yep. on Saturday night, and I think it starts up there next next this week or next week. And um, so we uh, oh, instead of going home, I left the kids at the grandparents, and we stayed overnight in uh, at the Hilton in Sydney. And uh, we're coming home from... Um, 
to play mm. and get in the lift. Yep. And guess who gets in the lift, mate? The Woz. Oh, no. No, Woz no. Was in the lift with me, and I was dumbfounded. I didn't know what to say to him. Sharon's going, say something, say something. Yeah. Ask him to sign your back of your head, anything. You're borrowed. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, didn't have, I didn't have my iPad there, so he couldn't autograph it or anything. Oh. And he was sitting there, and he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and blah, blah, blah. So he pressed the button, penthouse suite. Oh, nice. Of course. Yeah. And, and it, <laughs> he, 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 look, he seemed like a really nice guy. He was just sitting there, minding his own business. He, mm. No airs and graces about him, you know, just walking around, no guards, oh, no yeah. look, I don't, of that shit. You know, look, he was just... Yeah. Mr. Humble. Well, I don't think there's a there, there's anything like that about him anyway. Because remember, a couple of weeks He's never ago, been like that. Yeah, we was we Just heard one bad report about the bloke. Yeah, we were talking about the story where he lines up for the iPad himself. Exactly, he doesn't expect any freebies. No, no, uh, that's good. We, he was mingling with everyone in, you know, he was mm. just being normal and whatnot. And he had a bag in his hand. I thought he's been to the Apple Store. No, nah, Hard Rock Cafe. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Probably nice. bought a couple of schooner glasses. Mm. But anyway, the, the my story that I was on about was that just with the, you know, we're talking about Apple and the Google Maps and if it's going to be any good or not, which I think it will be because, well, let, let, let me just finish the Google yes. Map story. Uh, it goes on to say here that it's according to the, according to 9 to 5 Mac, of course, Apple is dumping the Google Maps in favour of a faster, more stable version of its own. Why isn't mm-hmm. Google Maps stable? I thought it was all right. Yeah, well, you know, well that, that's what Apple's saying, isn't it? Yes, yeah. justifies their uh, so exit. Apple's yeah. So obviously these rumors have have come to the fore because uh, apparently Apple are buying up mapping companies like C three, Poly nine, and PlaySpace. So right. read into that what you will. But then uh, so as you were going on about Eric about um yeah if it's going to be stable or or whatnot. Now Steve was now because he's been over here uh, and he's been what delivering a a, a talk to whatever conference or whatever. You know, it's just some speeches and whatnot. Some, that's right. And he was talking about it, one of the things he did talk about was how we're you know we've been getting ripped off for software over in Australia, and he's you know he's he's all for it. But yeah, good for him. Like he's not going to be against it, is he? And he's got to give a speech to, to us. And the, and anyway, so he's voiced a renewed desire to see the to see Apple open its architecture to the masses, allowing users to expand and add their products at will. Apple's objection to such use has led others to develop hacks that of their own. Uh, so I don't know. What do you think about that? I think that Apple should remain closed. I agree, and I don't think they're ever going to go open like that. They've tried that in the past, and it was a disaster. I think, and my... Yes, Will, oh, you're going to... Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, everybody <laughs> bags Apple for being closed, being locked down, you know, but that's what makes them... That's for right. the most part, anyway, as, as know, good as, it reduces as good as their that. vulnerabilities. You know, it, ma- yeah, exactly. it, it makes exactly. them a more stable operating system. It, it makes them, in the long run, it makes them a better product. Yeah, um, I agree. You know, so as much as a hard time as they get about being locked down, hmm. stay doing that. That's, at the moment, at least, whilst ever Android and the other operating systems are much more open source and much more prone to problems, at the moment, that's their draw card. Because I think that's, that's and that's what the, their strength is. Their weakness is also their strength. Yeah. Mm. But yes, that's right. Because that is, that's probably the precise reason why I'm going for the iPhone five, is because I'm I'm not I'm not happy with the that the, you know, everyone having a go with the with the Android yeah. system. Yeah. So um. Exactly. Yeah. So I just want something that works. Like if I if I had time to muck around and you know wanted to do this and that, well yeah sure Android's the way. But I just want the thing to work. So uh, that's yeah. So I was surprised that he was he was. Of that way of thinking, um, well, look, but he, but well, it's not really a surprise when he's always been like that. He's always wanted Apple to be open, and he and he mm. he fought long and hard for Apple to be open, and he was pretty much overruled by Steve Jobs. Because also, I, I, was know, I you read his um the bios and everything that he used to say to you know Steve Jobs, look, we need um you know the Apple II, for example, to have more slots so people right, could yeah. uh, muck around with it and all this sort of stuff and and he was Steve was going no no we're not going to make me people aren't going to be able to open it that's it yeah look i think they would benefit from certain amount of open source in certain areas you know there are some things that it's not going to be detrimental and it can really only be beneficial but as you say for the most part i mean you know it works why change it <laughs> Yeah. Look, oh, for example, right. look, if they want to open up their software, 
you know, if their iPhoto is available for Windows, like they have done with iTunes, stuff like that, I don't think anyone would mind that. But I can't see them opening up their hardware. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no way. Uh, all right, so look, let's. Uh, I've got one more little uh, Apple story here before we uh, go to some other things. Yeah, Apple, there's been a lot of conjecture of late about the 4G iPad in Australia. <laughs> now, apparently that's oh, been oh. rebranded. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. It's been rebranded, though, worldwide. It's uh, now it's now the iPad Wi-Fi with cellular. So oh, now that's, that's so poxy. Yeah. That's that's much more much clearer. Yeah, oh, no. that's, <laughs> and it's hey, that's a that's a new. Well, who who's who came up with that name? Someone from Microsoft? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, it sounds like it, doesn't it? But yeah, Wi-Fi with with cellular, like it, it's not even called c- cellular over here. It's a mo- why not Wi-Fi with mobile? But, but it's all it's rubbish. It's rubbish. Look, Apple has dropped the four G branding. So far, the rebranding has been changed on Apple's online stores in the UK, Australia, the US, Canada, UAE, Vietnam, Thailand, Singapore, New Zealand, Malaysia, Ireland, Hong Kong, with other stores to follow shortly. Geez, they've got a few, haven't they? Uh, In addition to the online stores, Apple retail stores will change their signage to the new Wi-Fi plus cellular cellular branding. So, yes, 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 yes. Now, um, let's, let's move on to something else. Let's move on to GAS Weekly iOS Review. And we put another few down on the weekend. And uh, look, uh, if you're watching on the video, I apologise for the brightness of these videos, but I think my codec is uh, stuff. I might have to reinstall the driver. I think that could be the answer. So anyway, but anyway, you'll still be able to see it and you'll definitely be able to hear it. So let's see what Garth's got for us tonight. Yo, Glenn and Garth back with you. Once again, another week, another another app review. Garth, what, whatever have you got for us this week? Whatever have I got for you this week? <laughs> Evernote, man. Evernote. How Evernote good. is a um. I don't know the best way to describe this. I guess a lot of people use it in different ways. Um, it's basically a fantastic way of saving whatever's going on around you. No, hang on, that doesn't even sound right. <laughs> but basically, if you want to say you want to remember something, whatever it is. Yep. Take a note. Yep. Beautiful spot to put it. It syncs across pretty much any platform. Now you can do Mac, the iPhone, iPad, um, so Windows you, machine, web interface. So, um, so when you mean take a note, you, you're yep. talking. You can do an audio, an audio note. Audio, text, picture. Nice, nice. Um, you can save URLs out of say say you're on your your computer. Yep. Um, you get plugins for your browser for the various browsers that will create it so that you can just send it straight to Evernote, and then that will form a part of your Evernote list, yeah, so, so that, that web page. So Evernote lets you take notes, capture photos, create to-do lists, uh, record voice reminders, and make those notes completely searchable, which is probably one of the best the best uh, yeah. features. And it'll automatically tag it all nicely for you. So if I create an create a, um, audio note, say I'm out to dinner, I think this is nice. Mm. This is an example they often use. Um, and take a picture of the menu so you know what was there, Record your voice. Um, it'll tag that with the location for you, and it'll be there, searchable, ready to be looked at from anywhere. So sync all of your notes across computers. Create and edit text notes. Uh, save, sync, and share files. Record voice and audio. Search for text inside images. Organize notes. Yeah, yeah that last part. Yep. So the OCR stuff. So anything you take a photo of, it'll run OCR over it, optical character recognition. Yep. To make it text searchable. Now yep. that particular feature is part of the paid account right right so you don't get that for free um it only costs about 10 to 15 bucks a month mm. uh, a year i should say oh. not a month so pro account. so some ways you can uh use evernote could be a grocery list yep. uh create uh, organize and save recipes plan a trip keep track of products uh keep finances in order reduce paper clutter uh by taking snapshot of restaurant menus business cards and labels so the, yeah, it's not too bad. Fifteen bucks a year. Look, it's time. I think it's about time that uh, that we all start getting behind like such small amounts per year. Why, why not? Why yeah. not? If it, if, it's if it adds value, and I think a lot of people once you start using it and using it a fair bit, they a lot of people swear by it. I've only just started using it, so it's you know taken me a little bit of time to get to get to sort of fit it into the flow. Mm. But um, people who have used it for a little while just swear by it. So yeah. yeah. And it's free to give it a go, so give it a go. Yeah, give it a go. Yeah. But that's right. But 15 bucks a year, well, that's just over a dollar a month. Yeah, so. but that's – and look, most of the functionality is available free. 
Mm. That's just for the optical character, and I think it allows you to have a bit more bandwidth, a mm. um, bit more data sense. All right, so, so there's Garth's iOS app of the week. Thanks, Garth, and uh, we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Yeah, we'll see Garth again next week. No doubt, no doubt at all in my mind. So, yeah, Evernote, I think you used uh, You're a user of Evernote. Are you Eric? I have been. Um, I've still got it on my phone and loaded up on my computers. It uh, syncs up very nicely. You know, you take a picture on your phone or make a note on your phone, you come home and it's already on your computer. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Mm. Um, all right, now moving on. Now, did you, you've got an audi- audible pick this week? I do indeed. Are you ready for that or are you... I What's will be in <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> All right. Well, while Eric's queuing that, let's go to a little quickie that I pulled out. And, uh, <laughs> well, where is that? <laughs> um, Apple has confirmed outages to its cloud platform iCloud for more than an hour on Monday, potentially affecting 15 million users. Apple indicated the outage lasted about an hour. Some users reported intermittent access and delayed delivery of email for up to three hours. Nasty. Apple's iCloud outage, outage came as it reportedly readies to take on Facebook and its billion-dollar social photography acquisition, Instagram. Uh, so it's apparently added photo-sharing features to its inbuilt iCloud synchronization feature, Photo Stream. Whew, there you go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now, well, bad stuff that you went down, but uh, good stuff you were doing other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> just quickly, Will, uh, Raspberry Pi, you got one yep. yet? Uh, no, I mean, I've still ordered one, obviously. Um, I'm still on backlog. I mean, they're, they're pumping out about uh, 75,000 units a day of the Raspberry Pi. Um, there's approximately, last time I checked, last week, I think, well, not last week, last night, I think there was um, well over 600,000 back orders. Wow. Uh, so, so even though they're... They never expected this sort of this sort of no. hype to be about the product, um, but, but it has officially been released in Australia now because has. they say that because they've shipped like you know five <laughs> <laughs> to Australia. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's. I mean, it's going to sell. The biggest for, problem. Here, sorry, it's going to sell for around forty one dollars, uh, and yeah. that includes delivery. Yep, that's for the. Uh, there's two models as well. At the moment, they're just making the upper end model because they're not splitting production. They're just making the up, upper end one. Mm. Um, they're just trying to pump them out as fast as they can. The, the biggest problem is because it's taken so long, uh, even though people are still keen, you know, I don't know if you know they're going to hurt themselves by, by it taking so long to get them out. The distributor warned of extensive wait times. Uh, obviously, <laughs> as Will was saying, uh, stating there was no visibility on delivery for new orders despite a current production cycle of 15,000 units every two days. So that's 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 uh, quite a few. It's quite okay. a bit. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's high. I've got a higher figure than that. I've got, uh, oh no, sorry, yeah, 7,500 a day. So yep. the pie has captured the imagination <laughs> of the enthusiastic audience with the low, cu- low cost and design that hails back to the Dick Smith electronics of yesteryear, which I remember... I used to have a little science kit and, you know, you put wire yep. from here to here, from there to there, yep. and you made a radio. Yep, burnt your so house down, go to boarding school. <laughs> you'll notice in, well, in the article I'm reading, it says there's over 300,000 people waiting, but that's for RS components. There's also another 300,000 people waiting on uh, the other stockist mm. as well. So, yeah, yeah there's so over half a million people waiting for this little thing. <laughs> so don't hold your breath. Uh, for the Raspberry Pi. Now, Eric, Audible. Now, Audible. Yes, uh, everyone Audible. Know, aud- everyone knows what an Audible is. It's an audio book, MP3, what AAC, the other Og, Vorbis, all these different formats that you can play on your little device as you skip around town. Now, it's their, their books, their story books, their stories. Uh, most of, or a majority or, or m- much of the time, the, uh, the author has actually read it or narrated it himself, which is quite interesting, makes the book quite interesting. And you can pick up a free one uh, if you haven't already uh, subscribed to Audible at aussietechheads.com.au and click on the Audible banner, sign up, and uh, yeah, we all get a piece of the pie, or piece of the pie. So, uh, Eric, now you've got a pick each week. I do have a pick, and And, uh, this week I've gone for something 
well, n- not much, not serious, nothing, no biographies, no history, no business. I've just gone with a, a fiction, complete fiction, and yep. it's called Kill Shot, an American assassin thriller. Nice. So a bit interesting. Hmm. So this is the uh, a publisher's summary, then I'll play the, play the rap. For months, Mitch Rapp has been steadily working his way through a list of, what's this, a list of men, bullet by bullet, with each kill the tangled network of monsters responsible for the slaughter of 270 civilians becomes increasingly clear. He is given the next target, a plump Libyan diplomat who is prone to, to drink and is in Paris, currently in Paris without a single bodyguard. Hmm. Well, let's play it, shall we? Worried about him. Irene Kennedy's face remained neutral despite the fact that she was irritated by her colleague's ability to read her thoughts. Who? You know who? Dr. Lewis said, his soft blue eyes coaxing her along. Kennedy shrugged as if it was a small thing. I worry about every operation I'm in charge of. It seems you worry more about the ones he's involved in. Kennedy considered the unique individual whom she had found in upstate New York. As much as she'd like to deny it, Lewis's assessment of her concern over rap was accurate. Kennedy couldn't decide if it was the man or the increasingly dangerous nature of the operations they'd been giving him, but in either case, she did not want to discuss the matter with Lewis. I've found, Lewis said in a carefree tone, that I worry about him less than most. Always have, I think. All right. All right. Good on, good on that. Echo, that. echo. All right, all right. So, so have we got still got echo? Yep, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Was, there we go. Yeah, that wasn't a very good grab, but... Um, you get the idea. You get the idea. But it was a, it's a good summary. It's a good story, and I think mm. I'll get that one. Yeah. Nice, so, nice uh, relaxing holiday reading. Now, that is uh, actually a bit different from what the Eric normal picks are, because normally they're uh, biographies, autobiographies. and uh, I like biographies and autobiographies. And, yeah, uh, and, and factual. But this, was, um, this, was, this, was, uh, this one caught my eye. Yes. Yeah, good stuff. So you can find Eric's tips uh, throughout the last well, however many shows. He's been tipping the Audible books uh, on the aussietechheads.com.au website. He's all, most of the tips are up there, if not all, all the uh, recommendations. Uh, if you ever stuck for something, just go there. Uh, once again, you know how to do it. Link on the banner on the Aussie Tech Heads page. Sign up through that. Get a free book. Keep it forever, even if you don't continue your subscription. 100,000 books, blah, blah, blah. All right. Now, yeah, good stuff. Thank you, Eric. No problem. Now, let's move on to some more stories. Gee, the time's flitting away again, isn't it? Flit, flit, flit. Now, There's a pretty, uh, a pretty, well, time story, actually, given it was only released, what is it, last night? The new uh, Diablo 3 was released. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's a huge, huge reception. There's a lot of people have it. There's a few people, regular listeners, I noticed in their Twitter stream, uh, have been playing it. Oh, yeah. Um, but Diablo 3, which was the latest offering from the World of Warcraft created Blizzards, um, basically proved to be so popular that it crashed Blizzards servers. Um, now, this basically as soon, almost as soon as it was released at midnight, uh, customers who pre-ordered the game found it impossible to log in, and almost immediately the uh, hashtag error thirty-seven, uh, which was the error that the web page kept throwing up, basically made it uh, impossible to for those people who had actually purchased it, mm. basically made it impossible for them to access it and activate it. Now, Blizzard blame uh, the errors that were caused by their servers being overloaded. Oh, no. Now, I'm sorry, but <laughs> if you've pre-ordered, I don't know, uh, 10 million keys <laughs> to possibly the largest game release of yeah. the year... Overloading you know, is... Maybe... I would assume you would probably up your server capacity for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look, I'm sure that these things, it's not just that they've bought a server, you know, like they've stuck it in the cupboard and it's, it's, 
it's uh, it's been smashed to smithereens. Its, it's capacity has been exceeded. Oh, these servers these days, they 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 just they scale. They don't just yeah. sit there and and they're limited to whatever you know, sixteen gigs say. They they scale as as, as more traffic comes through and and more things happen. These things that they're, they're, they're allowed, they've got room to move to 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 expand and to scale. But um, yeah, so that's a, that's a furphy to mine as well. But apparently, uh, some of the the Diablo 3 was in development for almost 12 years and some people or certain Koreans say they just finished it in six hours. Six hours? Jeez. Truth. <laughs> well, um, so while we're talking about games there, Will, I've got a little story here, which is which is not very good, actually. If you're a, you know, the, the game shop game. Mm. Yeah, 500 employees, 92 stores. Potentially facing closure. Yep. So Price Waterhouse Cooper stated the company's financial circumstances do not permit us to continue the company's existing returns policy. So they will, however, continue the standard seven-day return policy, uh, policy, which is a statu- statutory regulation. So now also it gets worse. Jeez, it gets worse. So customers with vouchers. Now this is where uh, that's a bit mm. of a sting. This is a sting. Customers with gift vouchers, uh, new conditions. Requiring co- requiring consumers use the vouchers as a maximum of twenty five percent of the purchase price. So there you go. So they obviously need the cash. Uh, at they least the they're cash. allowing the vouchers to go through. Yes, but as you a know, maximum of twenty five percent. So. Well, yeah, but it's not twenty five percent of the voucher though. It's twenty five percent of the total price. So if you've got a hundred dollar voucher, in some respects, it's going to make you, you spend right. four hundred dollars. So yeah, that's right. really. It's actually not a silly idea because it's going to make you spend more to redeem your voucher. But it's not a silly idea. But I think, to me, w- when reading it, this, it's uh, it brings back into question the whole thing about well, okay, gift vouchers. They're not really mm. that. Are they are they a a, a a good alternative to just popping a twenty dollar note into an envelope? Like, You'll notice on the no. back of gift vouchers now, and they've been doing it for a few years. It says this voucher is not redeemable for cash. And mm. that is the reason. If if it was redeemable for cash, then they can't stop you from using it as a cash substitute. Um, but because it's not redeemable for cash, they can basically put any yeah, I, anything they want. You know, well, that's so. right. Yeah, oh, that's right. So I, I know that there's there's terms and conditions that conditions attached. But yeah, I just find that a bit of a oh, a bit of a a thorn in my neck. That you know that at even. Least, uh, but at least they're letting you use it. Not like wow, when wow went under. Um, which, by the way, was just because National Australia Bank couldn't be bothered renewing their loan um, because WOW Sight and Sound was actually owned by National Australia Bank. Um, they just cut off vouchers. They said, no, nah, that's it. They're not redeemable. Too bad if you've got them. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that. I think if you've got a, a voucher, uh, then you should be able to redeem it, and I don't, I especially and also don't like expiry dates on them. Mm. Um, like fair enough. You, if you come in five years oh. later with a with a twenty dollar voucher or a voucher for a, a free nail polish, well then yeah maybe you might have to tip in an extra ten bucks or something because the price of that service has gone up. But to to cut off or expire vouchers which have been bought by cash, I find I've, look I find that a bit of a hard thing to swallow. Yeah, I think a lot of that. Oh, at least the reason we. What's that, Eric? We're a bunch of girls. We are. We're yeah. The reason that we used to do that in the bottle shop, the reason they expired after 12 months was purely logistics reasons because trying to track if it's a legitimate or a fake, um, you know, voucher yeah. after 12 months, the amount of, you know, it's, it was just easier to make mm. it 12 months and that's it. So so what you're, so you're Eric, you would be thinking that... Most gift vouchers are 12 months. You go to yeah. Westfield, you get a gift voucher to 12 months. Yeah. David Jones, iTunes, they're all 12 months. For precisely... You know, one of the reasons would be what Will just said. Yeah, but um, but what I'm saying when is, when it comes to um, redeeming, that's um, there's an old saying, people: caveat emptor, buyer beware. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Just like the way it goes. You buy something, you take the chance. That's why I don't buy prepaid anything. You know, when you have these gym memberships, you know, they, they've well, actually they've stopped that now in Australia, in in New South Wales anyway. But remember, in years ago, you'd have to, you'd, you know, when you joined a gym, it'd be. Oh, you've got to pay 12 months up front, and then three months later, they're broke. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my brother got right. stung with that. Right. Well, a lot of, yeah, a lot of people did. Mm. And so they stopped that in New South Wales. But yeah. when it comes to redeeming gift certificates, borders, for example, went, went under 
a, a yeah. year, year and a half ago. Mm. And a lot of people have bought us gift cards and gift certificates and stuff like that. And they were saying that they were redeeming them for half their value. So if you had a $20 gift card, it was now suddenly worth 10 But that's what I said. That's, like, that's, that's the chance you take with gift cards, especially when they're, you know. Yeah, well, that's I don't think they a problem with an iTunes card. I don't think they're going anywhere, but no. well, David Jones. But, but Mike, Mike's question was, like at the, at the start of the, the story, was, was that, that are gift cards all they're cracked up to be? Like if you're going to give someone a gift, why not? Why wouldn't you be better off? Which I am to do because I don't like the gift card setup. I just put your twenty bucks in an envelope, and the person can do with it what they will. No expiry That's date. True. That's true. Yeah. Look, if you're not sure about where you're getting your gift card from, if they're not a big outfit, I'd be more likely to do that. If they were a big outfit, Maya, David Jones, you know, Woolies, hmm. um, you know, Dick Smith, Bunnings, I'd have no I problem. Mean, yeah, that's right. Most of my mates who give me gift. So basically, pretty much everybody I know gives me a super cheap or a Repco gift card. That's basically the standard present. And for two reasons. One is I can just carry it around and use it like cash in those stores. And as you say, because they're a bigger store, the, you know, I'm not really going to have any problems with them. So I think the, there is... They're, they're there is. Even bigger stores, but they're so small that it's not hardly worth worrying about. Yeah. Mm. Well, look, I got a gift card through the week. Got a little a uh, uh, Woolworths one, you know, Woolworths. Oh, yeah, five bucks. So I tell you. Yeah, you told me yeah. last week. It was pretty funny. Yeah, it's uh, look. I had an empty can of Pepsi, Max, <laughs> in a in a box of thirty. They sent me five bucks. Champions. <laughs> Champions. You know what they should have given you. They should have brought. They should have sent someone over to your place and give you a smack across the head for buying Pepsi in the first place. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What's wrong with Pepsi? Oh, Everything. that's us. Nah, what do you buy? Um, Coke. You American, you. Oh. Nah. Diet. Coke Zero or Diet Coke, mate? Well, Coke Zero, Coke Zero is nice, but like I, the reason I buy the Pepsi Max or slash Pepsi is because it's uh, when you mix it with your spirit, it's a it's a much nicer mix than Coke. Yeah, well, it's just, uh, by, by my standards. Anymore. <laughs> with the vending machine, there was a vending machine at the train station in Melbourne a couple, few years ago that just swallowed my $2 coin. Rang them up, said, what's the deal? And they actually went to the trouble of taking my address, taking all my details down, and they actually posted me out a two dollar coin. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I did, I did the same thing. A, a thing took my dollar sixty or something, and I got a check for a dollar sixty. That's not. a check. That's even bank. worse. <laughs> uh, but anyway, anyway, uh, Microsoft Cans has got rid of the free upgrade to Windows Eight. So remember, scum. Oh, scum. But, it, but even though, uh, look, look, fair enough. They've done what they've done is they've done the they've done the Apple thing, upgrade twenty bucks. Yeah, we, yeah. So at yeah. the moment, it's been it's been rumored said that it's going to be a fourteen ninety nine US upgrade, uh, 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 price to update. But uh, so normally, like in years gone by, you 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 know, uh, Windows Seven was coming out. So if you bought a machine with Windows Vista in the in what three months before the launch of Windows Seven, then you were just an idiot. Then <laughs> you would get an automatically get an upgrade to Windows Seven, and it was to stop people from uh, not buying computers and hanging out, and, and, you know, and, and not making the the computer. Yeah, that's right. Because what they're trying to do is break the cycle of people only buying the new software when they buy a new computer. Mm. So Microsoft is offering. Yeah, that actually, their sales cycle is very very long. Yeah. You know, like people buy it when Windows Seven gets released, and they don't buy in another computer. For three years, so they're yes. trying to get people to buy more regularly. Yeah, but look, this window, the Windows 8 launch, that's sort of creeping up on me. Didn't know it was all sort of steamrolling ahead, isn't I'm it? Extremely happy with Windows 7, and I wouldn't change a damn thing. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy Windows. as well. Yeah, Microsoft is offering two mainstream versions of the product of Windows uh, 8, Windows 8 and Windows 8 Pro, uh, instead of offering a free upgrade, as we said. The uh, the um, to the version of Windows that, that most closely matches the version of Windows 7 the user buys of a new PC, Microsoft will be this time offering only the higher end Windows 8 Pro. So that's Fair not enough. bad. Yeah, that's that's all right. That's that's Fair enough. Okay. You get a you get a you get a, a better version for fifteen dollars. But yeah. is that fifteen dollars so US? Yes. Fourteen ninety nine US. So that should only be about one hundred and sixty three dollars here. Is sixty three dollars <laughs> in Australia? That's right. <laughs> So that's right. So Windows 8 Pro includes features missing in the basic version that were included in Windows 7 Ultimate and Enterprise, such as BitLocker encryption and Hyper-V desktop virtualization, among other power user features. Windows 8 Pro will also include Media Center, 
um, otherwise available as a separate mm. add-on pack. <laughs> wow, add-on pack. Oh yeah. Can you please include media player and remote control thingy for free? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Now, uh, <laughs> Telstra launches Facebook app for prepaid mobile users. I don't know if you guys, any of you saw this, but for prepaid mobile users, you can actually recharge your phone off this Facebook app. And uh, huh. you, you, you can also... I wonder how much of a cut Facebook gets out of that. <laughs> probably at standard, whatever it is. But That'd be uh, quite a lucrative for them, I would imagine. Well, I'm, I'm sure it is. And also, like, and one of the smart things that also comes out of this is that like the, you, just the marketers and the, the money the money people they're just everywhere because like you wouldn't think of these things well, you would I suppose given the time but you know but one of the things is that they're you're not just pre you ca- don't just have to prepay your own oh what's going on there oh, surveys and stuff you don't have to just oh. prepay your own but you, because it's on Facebook you you can run out of credit and then send send the thing to a friend to pay it. <laughs> you can send it to a friend and say, can you pay my mobile prepaid phone, please? Get me that back works. on the air. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> well, probably to some people. So apparently this is the, among the first in the world to will be the first in the world to be able to control a prepaid mobile service directly from Facebook. The app can be downloaded from Telstra's dedicated customer service page on facebook.com slash Telstra 24x7, the numbers 24x7. Yep. Or customers can also search for My Telstra P prepaid using the search tool on the Facebook homepage. So Telstra, a quote from Telstra, in just a few clicks, customers can use the app to check their balance information, recharge with a stored debit or credit card and view up to 180 days of usage and recharge history. And should a customer run out of credit, they can ask their mates for a top-up. Oh, good on you, And your mates, mates will <laughs> run the other direction. <laughs> uh, Telstra in the coming weeks, We'll also be offering it as an Android app that will allow prepaid customers to manage their services direct from their mobile handset. The app will be available to download from the Google Play Store. So there you go. Right, there you go. Yeah. Now, yeah, just a, go on, said, go on, mate. I was just going to say, someone in the chat room said you can also do the uh, Domino's Pizza through the Facebook app. Um, nice. And I know, well, years, years ago, I, mean, I don't know why it's taking so long to go through because... You know, 10 years ago in Melbourne, you could send a text message to a vending machine, get a free can of Coke and a bill your phone. So I don't know why this sort of stuff, to be honest, is actually taking so yeah, long to happen. You're right, Will. You're right, Will. There's a there's a client that I used to have up at um, up at Gosford, and they had a um, a pie vending machine mm. with, and with, you know, hot food and stuff like that. And um, they would – you could send it a text message and it would bill you. And at the same time, when the pies, it, its stock ordering system also had an S, had a pre uh, a SIM card in its in its mm. chipboard or whatever. And every time a um, pie was ordered or was running low on stock, it would send the report to the supplier, and then th- they'd come and fill up the um, come and fill up the machine. Yeah. All 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 done on GPRS. Yep. So mm. I don't know why it's. To be honest, I don't know why it's taking so long to be to be implemented. Really? Well, th- in in Japan, this sort of thing happens quite often. I don't know. I don't know about America, but Australia tends to always be a little bit behind in these things. A little bit. A little bit. We've still, got a, think... we've still got a video store down the road that's actually got videos in it. <laughs> yeah, our, our video <laughs> store up the road here closed about um, a year ago, and oh, uh, well. it just got smaller and smaller. Yeah. <laughs> just it just got small. Poor, I feel a little bit sorry for them too. But we're not we're not big movie watchers here. But uh, occasionally Kim would go to the video shop, or she'd go to the vending movie thing, you know, yep. at the shopping centre. And yep. um, but now you know we've got the Apple TV, we've got That's the T box. Yep. Like, yeah. It's you know, no, no need. Video shops are the same price. You know. Yeah. It's good. But you can always tell when you're in a lower income area because there's always the video shop. Like you look at the one at Goodner, for example, that, is very that went under. You know, the one at Goodner went underwater, got completely flooded during you know a couple of years ago, and everybody said, "Oh, it won't reopen." You know, there's no chance. And they come back, they completely rip, you know, refitted this place out, and they restocked it and everything, and it's still going great. You know, yeah. so <laughs> Good because these are the people that don't have the the appliances or the they bandwidth. Just have a D- yeah. DVD player. True. True. But you can now, do just one thing, just something I stumbled across a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's this site I, I came across called How to Install a Fully Functional, and you know, you guys might might have a, a slight interest in this, How to Install a Fully Functional Mac OS X 
lion on on a virtual machine inside Windows 7. Yeah, right. Right. So there's I've shared the screen there. Um, and it just goes through step by step. Where do you get the, where do you get lion put, from? All the links are there where to download the free VMware trial and all this sort of stuff yeah. and where to download Lion, how, what to do, everything step by step by step. And you, so you're, you install VMware on your on your Windows 7, then you go through the steps and you'll have, and then you can boot up the, the uh, virtual machine when you're already in Windows 7 and then run, ma run uh, Microsoft on it. So that's on Lifehacker, Windows 7. Uh, uh, Windows 7 Hacker. 7 hackercom forward slash and then just do a search for um, how to install Mac OS, OS X Lion. Yeah, so that was like, yeah, nice, Eric. Good work. Good find. So you make yourself a little hackintosh. Well, that's why I'm, that, that laptop that um, I've got sitting here gathering dust <laughs> might as well be put to good use. <laughs> what are you going to do it? I'm thinking about it, yeah, when I get time. See how just, it goes. It's, See how it it's just a matter of uh, getting the time to do it because I'm sure it's not as easy as it sounds because there's always going to be issues. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how we go. All right, good stuff. Now, you guys got any more stories? Will, Larry? I do, a couple of quick ones. Um, I have one more after Will. All right. Uh, Optus upgrades the school satellites uh, for $15 million. Basically, Optus has signed a five-year, $15 million contract with the New South Wales Department of Education uh, to provide satellite services to schools in remote areas so they have access to broadband. Um, so basically they're doubling the amount of available bandwidth on the satellites, uh, increasing the upload and download speeds by as much as 10 times. Um, they won't disclose what speeds the upgrades will achieve, probably mainly because they're not going to know till they do it. Um, if but it works. what it will basically do is bring satellites from dial-up speed, which for the most part they are now, up to, you know, ADSL 1 speed. So they'll actually be usable. Um, the up upgrade will service schools that cannot be covered by fibre. Under um, It'll reach 22 schools, 6 TAFEs and 165 homesteads, which are covered under the uh, distance education program. Um, so basically, yeah, th that'll be good because it's something that's, you know, been needed to be done for oh, quite yeah. a while. Yeah, so. Yes, that's true. I agree with you. And I just wish they'd uh, just hurry up and put the NBN in these areas. Just get on with it, people. Mm. Well, they won't, though. They won't roll NBN out to Whoopup just because it costs them too much. You know, They should. Um, I mean, they probably will in, you know, years 20 years' time when yeah. it's not that difficult Someone to do. Someone moves but out there. I think at the moment it's <laughs> out of the question. Yeah, but how, how does the... How does the MBN get from, say, Melbourne to Perth? It's got to be a big underground cable there somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, but, but, the like yeah. Yeah, but the infrastructure's already in place. The conduits or whatever they're going to use are already in it's place. All the, it's, all the, it's all the telegraph poles. they just got to lay the cable. Yeah, that's right. So, mm. um, But to go to a lot of these smaller places, you know, they've got to do more than just that. They've got to upgrade uh, exchanges. They've got to upgrade a lot of stuff. So, I mean... They probably will eventually get out there. Um, either that or a lot of it will be handled wirelessly. But there's always going to be one house, you know, surrounded by 65,000 acres of land. They're not going to run a cable out to that house. Ah, fair enough. So, fair enough. Not uh, enough to kick in 600,000. The other yeah. thing, too, just quickly, um, apparently, according to scientists, scientists have <laughs> developed a technique to generate power with a harmless virus. Um, <laughs> they've basically found this virus that converts mechanical energy, so vibrations, movement, that sort of thing, into electrical en energy. Um, it's piezoelectric piezoelectricity, basically. It's con convert uh, it's converting, yeah, mechanical to uh, electrical. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, they've the the short story is they've developed these little microbial viruses that are able to to handle that and they, they'll, they'll do it themselves. So yeah. there's really no chance that that could go wrong. <laughs> yeah, um, there's, good luck. There's no way this self-replicating, self-surviving, self-conditioning virus will ever get out of control. No, that's right. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Go and, go and contract it. 
the best part is it's been handled by the US Department of Energy. Yeah, oh. well, they're all pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Eric, you had one last lucky last? Well, lucky last, uh, Eduardo Severin, co-founder of Facebook, <coughs> will save oh, at least $67 million in federal income taxes by dropping his US citizenship, according to a Bloomberg analysis of the company's stock price. Those savings will keep growing is if Facebook shares increase. Severin renounced his citizenship in September and he lives in Singapore. According to his spokesman, Severin was part of a small group of Harvard U University students who started the social networking site. He owns about 4% of the company. The, saving, the would-be savings underscore why more people are giving up US citizenship before potential increases in taxes for the highest earners. The value of Severin's stake has swelled along with increases in Facebook share price before its initial public offering, uh, blah, 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 blah. His stake is worth as much as $2.89 billion. Wow. And the, he's basically renouncing it because he, um, he doesn't have to pay the capital gains tax rate of 15% um, if he's a citizen of another country. I do don't you, know all the details, but... Um, do you think this... What's that? I was just say, do you think that when you're, like, when you're talking about so much money, is there a point where it just becomes greed? No, mate. It's just called <laughs> e it's just called efficient capital management. But don't but don't you think like, I, would you ever be happy with? Uh, is there a certain amount that you would be happy with, and then you'd let things just flow? Or, yeah, but or I think there's. I think everyone has a has a um a definition in their head of. And it's not a, it's not about the amount of money. It's it's more about what what would make uh, any individual feel like they have you know one hundred or ninety percent financial freedom or independence. Yep. You know, and that can be any figure. Yeah. You know, some people it's less. Some people it's more. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't sit here and say to you, I need at least a billion dollars to be happy, because obviously that's a lot of money, and I think I'd make it'll take me a lot less to be happier yeah. than that. But that's what, but I mean, um, like when you talk when this when you talk say this guy, he's got what? How much? One point seven billion. Well, it'd be worth two point eight billion. So he's got three billion dollars, right? He's worth three billion dollars. Uh, so he's renouncing his citizenship for the for, because he doesn't want to pay fifteen percent. He doesn't tax. want to pay a certain amount of tax, whatever that figure is. Yeah. Um, look, I think that most people would do the same. You would do the same. You would. Especially if you are a citizen of this country, you think, why should I give this government any more money? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't. Well, just piss up against the wall. You know what I'd rather do with the money? I'd renounce my citizenship, and then save all that money, whatever he's saving, two hundred million dollars, and then I would set up a charity mm. for the money that I've saved, yeah, and give that directly to the people that can use it, rather than mm. give it to the government. Or, or you, you could build the Titanic three. I could do that too. Yep. <laughs> okay. I could do that too. Um, just quickly, I know we're running long and this is going to be a pain in the ass, but um, this is a story I was trying to find earlier. I finally found it. The government, the Australian government has started an initiative to basically have a partnership with the DHS, Department of Human Services, that it will on-sell the government's old refurbished computers uh, to concession card holders you know, as people on Centrelink or low income yeah. things like school schools not-for-profit yeah, organizations be now bef basically before I get to the price um, can we guess there's a Western Australian company bought 19 of them just as a, a test they didn't have, have, they 19, have a concession card <laughs> uh, of those 19 10 were ex-government and four had sensitive information still on the hard drives. Three of the four hard drives had been formatted once, and the fourth hard drive had no attempt at all to remove the information. Um, now, that's your government work, for you. Yeah, mm. Work Ventures, who is the partnership that they're running this through, uh, will be selling them with Microsoft Windows, Office, and a laptop bag. Now, just to give no, you I reckon we should get one because we're going to find some dirt that we could expose. <laughs> um, Seriously, they're that stupid. Go, I can go down to the warehouse on Compton Road and buy a ex-government laptop with a bag, um, a twelve-month warranty, a few other bits and pieces for one hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, so these ones that are actually coming from the government are being donated to this company, and they're selling them for three hundred and twenty. 
Got to change that. Second hand, now, three year old ex government laptop. That's greedier. That's greedier than this Facebook guy skipping the country. That mm. is just ridiculous. Next I mean, question. Give, these these concession card holders, pensioners, whatever. Yeah. Um, okay, you get a cheap computer, but they still can't afford to get on get online. Yeah. Well. Oh, actually, pensioners get uh, discounts like, through Telstra or free discount. internet or discounted internet. Well, they don't, I think they only get discounted um, telephone rental. I don't think they get discounted internet. Depends on your pension, I think, because dad gets dad's on the full pension. He gets uh, free ADSL one. So. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's in New South Wales. I don't know if that's a state-by-state state thing. The, I want to get my walking frame and my Mission Impossible <laughs> makeup and go down to the freaking Centrelink office and, 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 get, and them, but get them to pay for my um my 100 megabit line. Your blue ring. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I look, it's a great idea. You know, I'm all for it. You know, I open to human bit. services, Australian open. government, get open. organised, sell them to pensioners and, you know. Open yes. Um, card holders for, you know, I don't know, 50 maybe? <laughs> yeah, well, it's better than you can go down and buy them, you know, cheaper. But anyway. Well, I can buy them for 120 and you can buy a three-year-old equivalent laptop on eBay for 50 to 60 bucks. So, yeah. yeah. But they're, but they're, it's getting Office and Windows and that, you know, like, you know, like, you might have, to, they might have, you might have to buy the license because the machines would be licensed to the government. So therefore, well, if they on sold uh, them, that's probably that's probably. Oh, I think that'd probably be an automatic transfer. I would suggest. Mm, who knows? Who Given knows? they've probably got a sticker on the bottom of them still. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who knows? But anyway, that, I think we've run out of time, and we got we got a tweet from Ben. Ben is uh, not happy that the show doesn't last his commute, so we went a little bit longer for you tonight, Ben. <laughs> so I hope I hope your commute. Just has listening anyway, Ben. <laughs> what was that, Eric? What'd you say? Thanks for listening, Ben. Yes, thanks, <laughs> and thanks for tweeting. That was good. Always good to hear from you. You can uh, tweet us at um, I'm at Aussie Techhead. Eric is at Eric with a K Franco, and Will at Mr Tomkinson. And you can email Will, Eric, or Glenn. <laughs> so that didn't work. So <laughs> <laughs> nothing works around here. But, <laughs> but you can. I'll try again. Okay, I'll try again. You can email Glenn. Eric, or Will, <laughs> at, <laughs> at Glenn Eric or Will at AussieTechEds.com.au. So until next week, thanks, boys. Thanks for jumping in. And, uh, no worries. No worries. Ha have a Thank nice you, week. Thank you, Lounge. Thank you, Ball Boys. And uh, have a nice weekend. Go the New South Wales Blues, of course, for next week's yes, State of Origin. Yes, go the Blues. So go, oh, I thought you were a Queen. Oh, no, you're a Blue Yeah, I'm a, not a, just because I live here doesn't mean I am one. No, I thought you was Maroon. Oh, you're one. And you're Tonya was one. the Blues. But anyway, so go the Blues. And, go uh, Queensland. And we'll, I'll either be laughing or crying next week. So until then, ciao for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh...